Hey guys, hey, it's John with Rubble Custom Rods. Uh, and we're gonna do part two of this kite rod build. Uh, hey, I just wanted to thank some of my most recent subscribers. Um, so uh, here we go. So Vans Army 99, uh, Pacific Northwest Angler, Martin Aurelio, Bayara Cardenas, Tom Tracy, 1234, Mount Grizzly, 52, uh, Adam Hopkins, James Murphy, Barbara uh, Rodberg, Ross, uh, Nakaran and Brian Morris. Uh, just a quick shout out to you guys. Thanks for subscribing uh, and thanks for watching my videos. I really appreciate it and hope you guys are all doing well. So let's go ahead and get started uh, on this uh, part two of this kite rod build. Okay guys, so <clears throat> basically the, uh, the kite rods come off the dryer on this epoxy, nice and dry. Uh, and you can see that's just my first coat and you can see even you know a couple of dry bubbles and some spots where they came up right there's another one so what i like to do um, is i like to use basically a razor blade and come back and nick all those back a little bit so anything uh, any of those bubbles or slight bumps and what i try to do is use the razor blade and get down as low as i can basically to the base of that air bubble and that way then we want to make sure of course we get epoxy in down into there right um, so that's why I try to cut basically it looks like a like a crater and then I try to just use this and just cut that little crater out of there yep and then I will go back. There we go. So got that out without cutting any thread, right? We don't want to go down too deep and, and nick that thread. And then we'll basically be starting all over. So I'm just going in there. And I'm looking for anywhere that I may have had a bubble pop up. And I just want to go in there and get rid of those. Sometimes you get these little small ones. I'll just take the razor blade. I'll just go in there real gently and just go in there looking for those. Use my finger first, find them, and then come back and knock those down. And it could be, you know, again, a small air bubble. It could be a piece of thread. Um, you know, you can see right there, you can see the edges of the thread up here by the tip top where they kind of stick up. A little bit right there and so um, yeah, I just use the razor blade to go in and find those and then knock those back and that's really basically it and then what will happen is when I go back and put the other epoxy on um, so I'll put another coat on here right then I'll make sure that we that little crater hole that we had there and that crater hole, I'll make sure we get good. Um, you know, that the epoxy fills that hole up nice, nicely. So we don't have any issues. All right. And I think for the most part, it looks pretty good. Yep. So, all right. So we've got all that out of there. So now what I like to do, um, is I like to take a piece of masking tape and come back over anywhere that I cut, well, basically the whole, the whole blank, you know, where I had epoxy, is I take this masking tape and I go back and pull up any of the little pieces of dried epoxy that we just cut off. Again, making sure there's nothing in that little crater hole like that, make sure there's no there's no dry pieces of epoxy that have fallen in there and, you know, got lodged in there or whatever. All right. And then that's really basically it for that. So the next thing I want to do um, is I want to go ahead uh, hold on a second. All 
All right, so the next thing I want to do um, is I want to go ahead and um, put on the decals. And then once I put the decals on, um, I will go ahead and let this decal sit on the rod um, for about 24 hours before I put a coat of epoxy on there. All right, guys, so um, putting on the decals. So the first thing I want to do, so the two decals that are going to go on, basically, uh, we've got the... Uh, We've got the, the red rum decal that's going to go on. Um, this is the first one that's going to go on. Uh, and then the second one is going to be, uh, you know, my logo or my decal. And so the first thing I like to do um, really is kind of find the center line on decal. There's a lot of different ways um, that people, uh, a lot of different techniques that people use. I'm going to show you mine. Um, and mine, is, of course, is with a ruler. And so basically all I like to do um, is take the, de take the decal, lay it down, take a ruler up to it, find that center cross point on that decal and basically slap your line, run your line on there. Um, and then now I have a line for the center of that decal. I'll do the same thing with mine. So I'll go through here. Snap a line on there, bam. And now we got a decal. And you have a problem with decals? Hey, here you go, quick tip. This is the tip of a lifetime. Decal connection out of Clarksville, Tennessee. That's the people you want to go to. Again, decal connection uh, out of Clarksville, Tennessee. They do all of my decals for me. Uh, One-offs uh, and then of course, you know, mass production. So like I build a lot of fishing rods for red rum, sport fishing out of Cabo um, or, uh, you know, of course my logos or if you're going to just do a one-off, a custom build for somebody, um, you know, one-time deal, they make those as well. So, you should check them out again uh decal connection out of clarksville tennessee so now we go to the rod right so now i have this kite rod blank sitting here um i want to go ahead and get it lined up for um this decal so this is going to be the top uh, this is the top of the rod um, so the first one i'm going to put on um, is going to be the red rum sport fishing decal so this one is the first one to go on I'm just kind of sizing it up, taking a look at some stuff. Uh, they're two-part decals. So I have the decal. I'm going to take a little piece of masking tape. Apply it to the back of the decal. Pull the decal off. On my center mark. Come back with my burnishing tool. I just peel that decal off, that top part of the decal. And I've got some videos if you're interested, you can take a look on how to do decals. So now we got the, the decal on. Bam, looking good. All right, now I'm going to rotate it over. Got a little bit ahead of myself right there. There we go. Got it on, hit it with the burnishing tool. And now we have my decal on there. And so now both decals are on the blank. 
So we have customer's decal. All right, the customer's decal and then my decal. And so like I said, I'm going to go ahead and let these set for about 24 hours. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and start putting the, the next coat of epoxy on. Yeah, and I used uh, four coats of epoxy uh, to cover the uh, decorative wrap. So the next thing I want to talk about really um, is adding the ferrule of the unibut to the um, to the blank. The first thing I want to do um, is I want to prepare the surface, which is important in any blank uh, any rod build that we do, right? So uh, what I want to use is a 3M pad, and I just want to scuff up that shiny portion of the blank. And you can see how now it's got that dull look to it. Take your hand or a shop towel, a little piece of a shop towel. Just go over the top of that and take that off. Um, and then that surface um, is prepared properly. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do, now that I have the, the surface of the blank prepared properly, I want to use some of this uh, mud tape or this mesh tape to take up some of the space when the ferrule slides over the top, right? Um, so the next thing I want to do is I just want to go ahead and put some mesh tape down on there, but I don't want to use this whole piece that pretty much covers that whole blank. I want to cut it down a little bit. Uh, and I think what I want to do, is I want to cut it down to about three squares size of three blocks basically or the width of three blocks on the mesh tape so i just cut that down and then what i want to do is put that over the top i'll put that right over the top here not all the way at the top but over the top and then i'm just going to start wrapping that mesh tape around Remember, I went with three blocks, so I put the first piece over it, and I want to take the ferrule and slide it over. I still have a little wiggle room. So what I want to do is I want to cut another piece. Uh, I have that part cut, so I'll lay that right over the top of that there. And again, I'm just using this mesh tape to take up space when that ferrule slides over. And that is a good fit. So that's where I want to I want to stay at right there. And I think I'm going to put one more piece on just below it. So I'm going to come back. And now what I want to do is I'm going to put that down here a little bit lower. And you won't need as much because, the, of course, the diameter of the rod is a little thicker down there towards the bottom, so you shouldn't need as much. Again, we're just using this to take up space and help us get a good fit. Yep, so I like that. I know I like the top one. All right, so I have my two pieces um, of mesh tape to help create and take up space on this blank. Why am I using mesh tape? Why do I prefer to go with mesh tape versus something like, you know, your regular masking tape? Well, the reason why is because the holes that's created by the tape. So what that does for me, if I use masking tape, basically my epoxy, it's basically just gonna go around the tape um, to secure the product. But when you use a mud tape like this, that has the holes in it. It also, yes, it takes up space, but it also allows your adhesive to get down in the holes and also attach itself to the blank there and the component that you're attaching. And in this case, that's the ferrule. Um, and we'll set that down. The next thing I want to do um, is I want to make sure that I prepare the ferrule properly. 
So what I want to do is I want to roll up my 3M pad, the same one I used to scar the bottom of the, uh, or to rough up the surface on the blank. So I'm going to stick that inside the ferrule, just get it in there and turn. All I'm trying to do is take up or just rough up the surface in there, make sure we don't have anything residue or anything like that that comes from the manufacturer that's going to um, you know, not give us the type of bond that we want. And then the last thing I'm going to do is take a shop towel, stick that down in here. Nice and clean. All right, pull that out, pretty clean. So we're good to go. So we've prepared the surface for that. Okay, guys, so the next thing we want to do in preparation of the ferrule is remember when this ferrule goes onto the onto the back end of this, the tip is already sealed from the tip top. So when I put this ferrule on, it all the air will be trapped. And what's going to happen, it's going to continue to want to push this ferrule off. So what I like to do is I like to drill a hole on the backside right here in this notch. Um, that way when I go to put on the uh, ferrule, it'll allow the air to escape and push some of that epoxy out. So what I'll do is go ahead, find a spot to drill the hole. And then now we have our hole. Now we have our hole inside there and clean that out. And then what will happen again, once this goes on to the, the bottom of the blank, it'll allow the air to come out and any additional epoxy to come out uh, behind that. Once Now that we have the hole inside the bottom of the ferrule, here's the big pro tip, right? You have to make sure that you add the locking nut onto the ferrule before you put it on to the bottom of your blank. If you don't put that on, what'll happen is you won't be able to properly secure the rod to the unit, but because the locking nut won't be on there. So always make sure um, that you put the locking nut on first before you attach the uh, ferrule to the, to the rod bottom. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and take our two-part uh, epoxy. Again, I like using Pro Paste. I think it's a great product. Um, you, know, you know, there's a lot of products out there again that you can use, but you know, I, I prefer to use the Pro Paste here. So, um, so I get my Part A down, my resin, my Part B, uh, my hardener. And all I'm going to do is mix these two up. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, I always like to put some of the epoxy on the inside of the ferrule. Then the Next part I want to do is go ahead and attach it to the tape or the back, the bottom part of the blank. This is just going to help make sure I give a good, good, nice bond with the epoxy and the ferrule and the rod blank. I'll go ahead and put some down there on the inside for good measure. All right. So then the next thing I want to do again making sure I have that nut on that ferrule already installed. I'm gonna start adding this on here. 
and I'm going to twist in the direction that my tape is on there and push down Now what I want to do is just come in here Take some of this extra off. You can see it's already coming out of the bottom, right? Already coming out of the bottom, which is fine. So first thing I want to do is start cleaning up now. I've got some of my isopropyl alcohol with my shop towel. I'll start taking off some of this epoxy. And the reason, you know, one of the reasons I like using epoxy, some people will be like, hey, why don't you use five minute epoxy uh, when you're attaching your barrels for your unibuts to the rod blinks. Remember, there's a few things you got to do. One, you got to make sure you get it on there. Uh, and then two, you have to have a working time with it to make sure it lines up properly. So as you can see, uh, we've got, got the ferrule cleaned up around the bottom of the foam. And I'll continue to clean that up a little bit. And then what we'll do is we will clean up back here on the back side of this. And then what I can do is just take, I have a stick or a piece of, you know, bendable aluminum that I stick in there and to help relieve that, release that air. So you get all that air out. And that should stop pushing that epoxy out. All right. And then we should be good to go. And then... All right, so now what I want to do is I just want to do a quick eyeball look. And I'm going to start to line this up to make sure I got this where I want it to be straight. Make sure again, no glue in there. And then the last thing, so I backed off the locking nut collar. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and insert the ferrule into the unibut and try to line it up till it locks down. Gonna find my center mass point. And now I'm just gonna turn the rod to make sure I've got it where I want it to be at. So I'm just kind of lining up the rod blank. So I lined up the unibut so it's in line with the rod blank and the tip top. And then I'm just gonna slide it off and then we're gonna let this dry uh, completely for 24 hours to make sure that we got a good uh, a good seat and then that's really it so again we got we applied the ferrule we prepped the surface of the rod we applied the ferrule um, we made sure we had the locking nut on there we drilled a hole at the bottom to let the air out um, when we put the epoxy on and we put the ferrule on uh, and then we just lined it up with the unibut we got it all made sure it was all lined up uh, in line so everything looked proper um, and then now what we're doing is we're just going to go ahead and let this dry overnight uh, and then we should be good to go. If you like this video and some of the other content that I'm making, uh, go ahead and hit the like button down below uh, and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think uh, or if you have any recommendations.
if you haven't subscribed yet, you know, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications and get notified every time uh, I post a video, which right now um, is every Monday at 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Also, um, right here uh, in the corner is a link to the first episode uh, or part one of this uh, custom kite rod build. So if you haven't had a chance to watch the first episode in this two-part series, uh, the link is right here in the corner. Uh, go ahead and click on that uh, and watch that. It's about an hour-long video, but it's full of uh, informative information just like this one was. So again, um, you know, hit that like button. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. I do really appreciate it. Uh, for those that you ha that have subscribed and that continue to uh, support me in the channel by watching the videos. Uh, and I thank you very much. Uh, until next time, uh, be safe. Bye.